what is up everybody it is zach tactical coming back at you again with another video and this one's going to be mainly focusing on how to use zeus zeus enhanced and a little bit of lambs the mods for arma 3 in zeus this is mainly teaching some of the guys in stg how to zeus and it's going to be kind of a baseline for them to see what the expectations are of what you should know how to do if you're going to be doing zeus missions so it's pretty simple um I, the video is going to be a little lengthy because there's a lot of stuff to cover but uh, hopefully you'll be able to stick around and you'll see some good stuff and you'll come out better on the other side. Anyway, if you have any comments, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and then comment again. It helps a lot, and I will reply as soon as possible. But on that note, let's go ahead and get started. Um, right now, I'm on Altus on our little training map that we have in STG. Um, we're currently at the little squad live fire area that we have built from a while back. But what I'm going to show you is first how to spawn a unit. First off, obviously, if you go to the right and you're somewhat familiar with Zeus, you should know how to do this. You go to the right, click on any tab, click on men if you want to spawn a man. Waiting. Click, click. Easy peasy, right? If you want to spawn a vehicle, there's two cool things you can learn about that. One, if you spawn a vehicle, automatically it just goes like this, and there's a dude inside. If you don't want there to be a dude inside, you can do two things. One, you can go down here to the bottom right and click do not place vehicles with crew. Place the vehicle, and now there will not be a dude in there. If you want to place a vehicle with crew in it, or you accidentally did it and you're like, oh shit, I don't want to delete the vehicle because the dudes are looking right at it and that's going to break their immersion. You can also just highlight the vehicle and press the G key and they'll just get out. And it's that easy. Okay, super, super simple. Follow with me. So that's how you spawn units. Let's talk about spawning groups. Go to the groups. Let's go to FIA. We'll spawn infantry, assault squad. Place them down. Baba buoy. There we go. That's how you spawn units. If you want to spawn buildings anything like that if you want to spawn a composition in, in buildings it's pretty easy you just go to groups go to empty and then you'll probably just select any of these let's just say military checkpoints let's do an independent checkpoint spawn it here and there you go quick note on this while it's spawning all this stuff right so if you see um it's hugging the terrain it's going to look a little fucked up weird you know if you don't do this stuff in editor so if you do this live in zeus um, really the best option is to not do that because you're going to have HESCO barriers and shit that are hugging the ground like this. And you cannot, in Zeus, last I checked, disable hugging the ground, hugging the terrain. You have to do that in editor and then individually edit this kind of stuff to make it look nice. But, you know, hey, if your group doesn't really care about things looking very appropriate and uh, very well made uh, with HESCO barriers, go at it. And uh, you'll have some weird combina combinations of compositions and stuff like this where they're just hugging the ground. Keep in mind, any custom composition you have that you want to spawn, you need to do that in editor because most of the time those are made with floating objects and you have to have to disable um, hugging the terrain and uh, one other option that's right next to it. Okay, so that's compositions, units, how to spawn all of them. Pretty simple. So now let's select blue four, which you guys should obviously know. There's blue four, op four, independent, civilian. We'll talk about that in a sec. We'll spawn an FIA fire team, right? So let's talk about waypoints, how to manage them, all that stuff. Obviously, a waypoint, you highlight the unit, give them a waypoint with right click and they move fucking towards it right super simple now with zeus enhanced a mod that we use it is very cool that you can do this if i want this guy right here to throw a grenade i right click on him i can go to the throw grenade module i tell him to throw a chem light right in front of him easy peasy right if you want the whole group to throw something you can right click do throw chem light throw chem light if they got a chem light, they'll throw it. If you want a whole squad of throw grenades at guys and you just hate your player base, go for it. Um, if you right-click on the unit, once again, that's right-clicking on the unit symbol, not the individual unit. Because if you click on the individual unit, they will not affect the other guys. So let's select the unit overall. Let's change their formation because you can do this now. You used to have to double-click on them and do it this way. But now with Zeus Enhanced, you can just right-click on the unit symbol, go to formation. It'll say, hey, form V. And they'll start forming a V, right? Let's also change their behavior. This one's useful to know. If you want them to walk, you have to have them on safe. Otherwise, they are not going to walk or they'll be guns up if they're on combat. So let's put them on safe and let's tell them to walk this waypoint here. By default, sometimes they'll just walk in a column because it's simple and they're just falling one behind each other and they're not tactical. Um, but let's actually get them to move to this waypoint here real quick. Sometimes they're going to be buggy because it is armor three. and You might have to give them a little nudge in the right direction to start actually walking. Oh, oh. Ooh, there we go. And now he's going to start walking. That's Arma 3 for you, ladies and gentlemen. It is a perfectly functional game with no problems. That being said, he's got to his waypoint. If we want to do anything else like heal that unit, we can select the group, do heal. You can change their stances to go prone if we want to. Makes the whole group go prone. 
can also change their speed, how fast they want to crawl, all that stuff. We can even make the entire group captive if you just do toggle captive. Same thing for surrendering. Note that if your player base shoots these guys while they're captive, technically that's a civilian and they will technically be committing war crimes. So please don't commit war crimes. They're bad. Don't do it, okay? Anyway, toggle captive. You can toggle and back off. On top of that, you can do other things with right-click that I didn't just cover. Like, if you just right-click on nothing, you can add objects to Zeus if they were spawned in an editor, or you can remove them. If I don't want to see these guys anymore because their existence is below me, I can just go to remove. You remove within 100 meters. No longer can see them in Zeus. Not worried about them. If they sneak up on my player base later, I won't know about it. Anyway, if we want to add them back, go back to add. Add within 50 meters. There you freaking go. That easy. So, I'll right-click back on the unit one more time. And we can cover lambs. I'll cover it very briefly because it's not a normal Zeus thing. Don't know very much about danger, going to be honest with you. Search waypoints, each one of these does exactly what it says. If you want to rush an objective, hunt, or creep, they do all that. Waypoints-wise, same stuff. If you want them to camp, you can tell them to literally set up a camp. If you give it a couple seconds, I'm pretty sure. There you go. They'll go into custom animations. Probably sit behind or around an invisible campfire when they're done crawling there. And they'll just chill out. They'll be camping. Uh, I don't know if that changes any of their spotting settings, if it makes them more comfortable and not able to spot very well, something like that. But I will tell you, it you know automatically does animations and make it makes it look a little bit more lively than them just standing there doing nothing. So it's very useful. Okay, so that is essentially right-clicking, waypoints, all that stuff. The next thing I do want to cover is how to garrison units and then how that affects custom compositions. Because some of you guys might know that's kind of hard. So let's do two sentries, right? So normally... You can do one of two things. You can do one, right click on them, go to lambs. If you have lambs installed, task is garrison. And then they should garrison this bunker, but it's a custom composition, so they might not want to do it, right? They don't want to garrison this. This is perfect. If it was a normal building, they would probably go inside and take up into position. Now let's spawn these sentries. This time I'm going to go to modules. I'm going to go to garrison. And you can use multiple different versions of garrison that we have installed. But the one I always say is either use Ace AI or AI. They essentially do the same thing. Go to garrison group. Select that dude, and we'll say within 22 meters, being right around here, let's make that actually about 26, and we'll just do even filling, all that stuff, and then they'll teleport to the building. They won't walk into it, so if they're, you know, in front of your player base and you want to make it immersive, you would probably have to use the Ace AI one that you can choose uh, to, te sorry, to teleport or not to teleport. But most of the part, you're going to be doing this before players even get there, so I just teleport them by default. So now they're in the building, right? You can just do ungarrison. Super simple. I think both of these work. So just to prove that, I'll do Ace AI, Ace AI ungarrison group. They will then leave the fucking building, right? Now let's say you have a custom composition that's floating in the sky and you do not want AI walking around it. Because just so you guys know, if you have like a custom composition out here in the, uh, the ocean, AI is not going to recognize they're in the middle of the fucking ocean, right? They're going to try to walk around. They'll face through walls. It's stupid. It's just how armor works sometimes. They don't know that walls exist. They're kind of oblivious to that. But a way to compromise on that is to do this. If you have a custom composition out in the middle of nowhere and there's no buildings around them, you can spawn a bunker, just like so. Select bunker large. It spawns. It's all crooked and stuff. We'll go back into garrison. We'll garrison that group. I'll place them near it so they actually go into it. Garrison the group, say within 12 meters. They're inside this bunker, right? Cool trick. If you don't want them to move and you want their pathing disabled without having to individually go through and click disable pathing, you just delete the bunker and now these guys will not move no matter what I do, but they're still combat able and they will still shoot at people, okay? Super easy. And then at that point, you would click them, drag them, and drop them into the fucking custom composition. I'll do that real quick since I kind of skipped that. Uh, I'll make it real quick. Do fire team. Once again, we're going to spawn a bunker. And spawn it here. I'll do garrison. Garrison group. Within... 33 meters we're going to delete the bunker and now i can drag these guys over to this shed right here hold down alt by the way to change elevation if you didn't know that drop them and they're just going to stand here no matter what happens they will stay there and they will not move super useful super 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 useful okay weather that is another thing i wanted to cover okay so we'll delete this over here if you guys didn't already know this is the module section where 99.99 percent of the cool shit you can do in zeus is going to be as you see we've got a lot of ace a lot of mcc a lot of lambs a lot of uh zei interiors all this stuff what i really want to cover right now is weather okay so we also have a mod called weather plus installed um right now i think i'm just going to show you general stuff with weather so let's start with environment okay environment First note, do not use the change weather module. It's super broken. It'll make half the map turn white. I don't know why, but it happens. 
You can make earthquakes happen. You can hide terrain objects, which this is a new addition from a couple months ago. If I want to hide this entire forest live and not in editor, all I got to do is do hide terrain objects, choose a radius, and choose actually what all I want to hide, which is nice too. It'll hide everything over here so you can have an entirely new area to spawn whatever the fuck you want live in Zeus. Very cool. Anyway, post-process, rarely used, but you can change the filters on the map if you want to make it black and white for some reason. I don't know why, but you can do it. Um, for time, okay, if you want to role play that you're skipping time in the future and for some reason you want you guys to think that they slept for a while, you can do the skip time module, which will have a thing pop up on their screen that says like 50 minutes later. For you, it'll just pause and then it'll pop back up, but for them it'll say like 50 minutes later. The easiest thing to do if you want to have that done quickly, you just set the date. You can choose the year, time, all that stuff. Drag and drop. Let's change it to midday. It'll just be an instantaneous change for everybody in the server. Super useful. Okay, vanilla weather. You can just go to the weather right here. Click on it. You can change raining, stormy, all that stuff. Fog. Know that when you do fog, it will be localized to whatever elevation you place the module on. So if I place fog here, turn it up the half, and then I go to higher elevation, it's not going to be that high. All right, but if I go on top of this hill, and then I place the fog and do that to the same level, it's going to be fucking white out down here. So keep that in mind that when you do fog, it needs to be at the same terrain that you want it to be for the player base. Don't do it on top of a mountain because it's not going to be cool. Okay. So moving on, if you do have Weather Plus installed, know that you have all these things at your disposal. If you want to have falling stars, dust storms, dust devils, thunderstorms, all that stuff, go for it. Just know that if you use more than, the, more than one of these at a time, most of the time you're going to break the server. So be very careful. And uh, don't be too lenient with how many things you have on the screen at one time. I'm not going to show these off because I have another video uh, showing off a review of Weather Plus and uh, I believe one more mod, Fire Support Plus. So feel free to check that one out on the YouTube if you want to. Lambs I'm not going to show off at all because that's not really just zoo specific. There's some other stuff that goes into that. So that's generally vanilla weather settings. Last note I'll say on weather is if you are a Zeus wanting to do a mission in a clear day, right? In the weather settings on the very top of your screen in the editor, do not have a rainstorm or overcast or anything in the forecast set because when you start that server, it's going to be raining. And if you override it with weather by changing the weather here, within like 15 minutes, it's going to default back to what you had set on the server because the forecast is going to stay the same regardless. So the normal thing you should do is just go all the way down and have for, you know the forecast and the rain level all the way to zero because that way you can actually change it uh, in the middle of a Zeus mission. Um, so that being said, that covers weather entirely. Um, that actually also covered time as well. Next thing, special treat for you guys that like to do the Afghanistan missions, the Middle East missions, and all that stuff. If you want to make a suicide bomber, okay, you can do it on any module you want, but for this one, we're going to do it on a man, and we're going to do it on a car. Okay, so we've got a car over here and a man by himself. If you want to do a suicide bomber, you type in either IED or suicide. Let's make him a ID slash suicide bomber, which is an MCC mission creator kit um, module. You can use that. This one is the one I normally use because it's super simple. If you want to have this explosion size do more damage, you can. Uh, let's make it a small explosion size. The explosion effect is either deadly, disabling, or fake. So for fake, we'll make it to where nobody gets hurt, but it scares the shit out of them, right? Uh, activation side is east, op four, west, blue four, and resistance independent forces. Let's say activation side is west. What I'm going to do is now he's going to patrol, okay? And then I'm going to move this guy over here so he doesn't get hurt. I'm going to spawn a blue four guy right next to him. And he's probably going to blow up. Let's see. And also MCC gives him a suicide vest if you didn't see it already. Let me see if it shows it. And he'll say death to infidels, charge towards the guy. And then blow up. It actually gives a special thing on their screen. It makes their screen shake. It's really cool. Very fucking immersive. Very, very cool, yo. Okay, so that's civilians and suicide bombers, IEDs, all that stuff. Very simple. So let's make the the um, car an IED suicide bomber. So we're going to make it a V-bed. We're going to do IED suicide bomber module again on the vehicle. We're going to make it small. Actually, let's make this one a large one. Explosion effect is going to be deadly. You can change this to be able to be disarmed. It is possible, and it's not too hard to use it with ACE. Activation type is going to be either proximity, radio spotter, mission maker only, minigame, yada, yada, yada. I usually just do proximity because it's the easiest thing. Activation distance is how far away that you want them to be. If you want to be right on top of them before they do it, go for it. Activation side is going to be west, and he is going to be automatically set to patrol if he was on a road, most likely. But let's spawn a dude near him. Waiting. A couple dudes. Waiting. And we'll have them walk up to that vehicle. Maybe they're Understood. doing a checkpoint or they're like a cordon or something. 
I'm going to go check it out. Once these guys get really close to it, it's probably going to go off. Hmm. I guess he's being pretty sneaky. Odd. Well, let's say we wanted to go off and it didn't go off because this is going to happen in your Zeus missions. You just click on him and you press end. And then it blows up. That's the ID for you. Now, for some reason, he's still alive because Arma is a very functional and well-working game. So we're just going to go ahead and end his life with the end key. That's pretty much IEDs. Baba Booey. Okay, so that's IED Suicide Bombers. Uh, same thing applies to regular IEDs or explosives you place on the ground. You place the explosive down. If you want it to go off with a pressure plate, make sure it's a pressure plate IED or bomb. Uh, and if you just want it to go off manually, you just press end, the end key right above your arrows um, to blow it up. Very simple. Switching sides is something I do want to briefly cover. You know, most, most of the time you're going to do this on players because let's say you want to have, you accidentally spawn them as blue four, you're making PVP. Sides is super easy. You just go to modules, you type in side. You can either change group side right here. I'm going to change myself to independent. There, I'm independent. I'm going to change me back to blue four. There we go. I'm back on blue four. If you want independent to fight like blue four, you just go independent hostile to blue four. You can change it. You can play a radio message. Sometimes it's bugged. Let's see. Oh, it's bugged. It didn't play anything. But now if we spawn independent forces, they will be hostile against blue four because we chose it to happen because we are God and the dungeon master. So on that side, that is how sides work. Uh, let's talk about ambush very briefly. So if I want to make an ambush happen realistically as a Zeus, the best way to do it is as follows. Not have these guys up here in a bunker and then have them laser beam a squad when they come around this corner, right? If you're going to do an ambush, you let the enemy enter your kill zone first, right? So let's say our kill zone is right about here. So what we're going to do is we're going to spawn some FIA. We're going to put them inside. Eh, we'll just put them right here in the woods, right? We'll put them right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go do that same thing we did in the very beginning of the video. We're going to go to their group selection. We're going to right click. Behavior is going to be, eh, let's say, stealth, just for extra kicks. So they're prone. And then their combat mode is going to be hold fire, defend only. So now, as the Zeus, you're making a cool and realistic ambush to where the AI isn't going to just laser beam them when they see them a mile away. So let's say we've got an infantry squad walking down this road here of FIA dudes. Now, these guys are probably going to engage them as soon as they see them. But as you'll see, these dudes could possibly see them anywhere from... Let's move them around a little bit. Let's put them like right here on top of the hill. So they can definitely see these guys right now, right? But they're not shooting them. They're letting them get as close to them as possible. Now, as the Zeus, if the players don't spot them and you want them to get shot at, you want these players to get shot at, all you got to do, now that you see they saw them because you can hear them whispering... You can change that combat mode to fire at will or fire engage at will. And they already started shooting anyway. So now they're going to be fighting each other, and that's how you do a ambush. Um, there are other more complicated ways you can do ambushes with IEDs synced up to AI, but to be honest with you, the simplest thing to do as a Zeus is just micromanage all to hell. It makes it a lot easier, promise me. Okay, so that's how that works. Let's work on suppress. That's the next thing I wanted to cover. Let's go over here to fire team. Waiting. Suppress is something that the AI does with certain mods, like lambs, but if you want to do it manually, okay, it's pretty rough, because if you do it, every one of these dudes is going to be firing on all cylinders for a certain amount of time, so it's going to be a little bit laggy for the server, but if you want all these guys to suppress for 20 seconds, they'll freaking do it. If you want just one guy, let's do one guy, he's going to stand up, he's going to fire for approximately, let's do six seconds. And he's just going to have this. We're going to have this pop up in front of us, and we're going to choose where he shoots. Let's choose to shoot here. Is he, He's just going to suppress the shit out of that. He's just going to mag dump that one area. And you can do that for pretty much every one of these dudes in the squad if you want to. Uh, the only bug that I've seen so far, I'm going to delete this guy. The only bug that I've seen so far is that if you choose the whole group to suppress a certain area, sometimes they'll just randomly start shooting in the direction they previously were looking. And the way to fix that, I'll tell you right now, it's very simple. You just have the dude, let's say he's suppressing this way for no reason, and you just hold down shift, and you change his direction. And it'll just start shooting right in front of him and not move. Super duper simple. So moving on, Zeus Enhanced Right Click, we already covered that. Um, if, we, so if a player is a medic, okay... Hear me out. If they're a medic or an engineer and they don't have that default in their spawn, 99% of, of the time you're not going to have it anyway. Um, it's super simple. You can either look this up or you can just go in ACE if you have ACE installed and you want to make them a medic. We go in ACE Medical, Assign Medic, and now I'm a full-fledged medic. 
You can also let the player base know that by double clicking on them and you can change his you know, symbol to something else because most of the time you're just going to be a private in there anyway. But if I was going to look at me in uh, DUI or if you're using ShackTac still, uh, it'll have a kernel logo above my head, which for us, we use to indicate someone is a medic. Makes it super easy. Engineer, also very easy. Should be under Ace Repair, Assign Engineer, boom. Now I'm an engineer or an advanced engineer. I have a degree and I went to college. Anyway, moving on. Um, end unit dismounting and pop smoke. Um, we already covered ending a unit and dismounting. So let's just cover pop smoke in vehicles. Cause you guys already know you can tell them to pop smoke. Um, you know, we'll just do vehicles and we'll do AI. I'll give you the, the second lesson if you didn't already get it. So we'll have a vehicle right here. Actually, let's not use that one. Let's use something that actually has countermeasures, but let's say we want this guy to pop smoke. All you gotta do is either you would one, either one right click, you would throw the grenade or you can just hold all that down on a whole group and you would press the Charlie key. If they're in contact, they should do it, but it looks like for some reason he's not doing it. So on this case, because arm is a very functioning game, I would just select smoke, tell him to throw smoke right in front of him. And at this point, he's going to pop freaking smoke. Super easy. So I think we can use a tank. Let me go in here real quick. Something that has countermeasures. Let's have this Abrams spawn. Let's uh, let's see if it has any countermeasures. Mm. Okay, you know what does have countermeasures? The Russians with their freaking tanks and their smoke canisters and shit. So let's spawn this and I'm gonna press the Charlie key. That's not working. You press T72, Charlie key. That's not working either. APC, Charlie key. Anything. Okay, well, it looks like they deleted that. I'm not gonna cover that. Anyway. Normally, if you press the Charlie key, they will pop countermeasures if they have countermeasures. It looks like any of the vehicles I just spawned didn't have it. But just so you know, if you press the C key, the Charlie key, like on aircraft, they should pop those. I'm going to give it one more try. I'm going to go to helicopter, spawn this AH-64. Move it in the air, and we're going to press the Charlie key. Ah. Okay, so it looks like looks like they got rid of that. My bad for wasting your 30 seconds. Moving on, uh, Intel. How to make Intel. This is useful for any missions where you guys want to have a piece of item that is useful for the mission that they need to find. So let's have a laptop. I'm going to search up laptop in units empty. I'm going to spawn a rugged laptop on the ground. I, got, I need to make sure I still see this as a visible entity, right? Being the yellow shit that's there. So now that I see this, I'm going to go to modules. I'm just going to look up Intel. Now through MCC or miscellaneous, you can create these. Let's use miscellaneous. And now this is one of my favorite things using the miscellaneous create at Intel. You'll share it with the entire side. We can delete it on completion. So being they picked it up, right? You can role play, they picked it up, or you can just leave it like they downloaded something. I prefer using ACE interaction menu, or you can just walk up to it and it pops up that space bar menu that fills up over time. I prefer ACE interaction. So they actually have to touch it, quote unquote. So the action text is going to be the thing they walk up to it and they see, let's say, um, download more Ram. Okay. So they're going to walk up to it to download more Ram. You can choose the sound. Let's do a laptop keyboard. You can also do search body. This is super cool for role playing, searching things. So check this one out. Action duration. You can make that shit 60 seconds if you want. But for this one, we're going to do four seconds. Title is going to be um, Get Wrecked Noob um, Download More RAM Again. Okay. And now I'm going to teleport myself over here with right click and I'm going to ace interact on the laptop and it will see Download More RAM. I will now download more RAM and it will say Intel Found. If I double tap the Juliet key, Normally, it would have that stuff pop up. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Let's see here. Briefing, team, players, Intel over here. There you go. So it'll pop up under the Intel tab. If you press the map. Get Rec Noob. Download more RAM again. Okay, so that is something super cool you can use. It's very immersive for searching dead bodies, getting Intel, all that stuff. Because I know interrogating stuff is another mod. Um, fire support is a very brief one that I'll cover. If we just go to units, if you want to have realistic fire support and you have a mortar firing pit built into your op that's controlled by AI, um, this is how you do it. So let's say VLS, you can totally use and you can also lock it on to lasers. I'm not going to cover that one. I'll let you guys figure that one on your own because you're smart and I believe in you. But let's do mortars because this is the most commonly available one. So let's do a standard mortar pit. Let's have three mortars. What we're going to do is we're going to modules. We're going to go to fire support. We're going to create a target. Let's make that target mm, this this right here, this little hilltop. Let's call it target alpha. We can also attach a laser target if we want uh, for any other guided munitions to lock onto that. It's very cool. 
works with that VLS, just so you know. Uh, so now we're going to artillery fire mission because this works on mortars and artillery. We're going to click on this unit that's all grouped together. We're going to pick target alpha. We can pick the spread. So let's do 136 meter spread. All three units are firing on all cylinders and we're going to do five rounds of HE mortar shells. You can also pick smoke and flares as well, and they will also realistically run out of ammo. Now, the reason why I say this is realistic is because you're going to have a realistic ETA from their firing point, this one being 3-0, that's 30 seconds. And they can also, if the friendlies are near them, they can hear the mortars going off, which is super cool. Because a lot of Zeus's like to say, oh, we call for fire support. Okay, well, here it is immediately hitting the ground. No, this time they actually, the players have to take into consideration you're calling for fire support. So it's going to take a second for it to get there. And so you can also hear it coming in and Baba Booey, it went kablooey. It's going off now and it's got a realistic 100 meter spread. And this is a realistic mortar barrage. Five rounds per mortar. It's coming in. Everyone in that vicinity is freaking donezo. So that's how you do it realistically with mortars or VLSs or whatever, however you want to do it. Now, if you want to do it just through the module and you want to be lazy that day, um, we all do it. Okay. If you have Fire Support Plus, you can do all these cool things. But if you don't have Fire Support Plus, let's just do a regular 155 howitzer, right? You click on here and you click on the map or on the terrain and it will just drop it right here. And you are... Basically, just going to kill everything in that circle, right? Or wound it, at least. What I like doing as Zeus is if I'm going to do that, what I do is I make them wait a certain amount of time, and they have to give me a six-digit grid as to where they want me to call it. So I pull up my map, look at the six-digit grid, and I'll hold down control for a fire barrage or a uh, artillery barrage, and I'll just place multiple ones in the grid that they just called. Maybe we'll do like a rolling uh, fire support, do like a little rolling barrage. Creeping barrage, excuse me, that's the right terminology. And it's just going to creep in on that entire grid square and everything inside there is dead and regretted all their life decisions. Okay, moving on that. Reinforcement module. This one is one of my freaking favorites for making things fucking immersive in missions. So let's create an LZ right here. It's going to be landing zone alpha. And then let's create a rally point, which is going to be rally point alpha. So this is a reinforcement module. Um, this comes, I believe, with Zeus Enhanced and used to come with a Achilles, but this should be a Zeus Enhanced module. Um, if you go to reinforcements, you place an LZ down in RP. Okay, those are absolutely needed to be able to use this module properly. Okay, um, so the way this works is this module is used for transporting infantry into infantry or I think APCs sometimes um, into an objective having them cover units or leave immediately while the other units are moving to an rp so it's a realistic insertion via ai so what we'll do now is we'll spawn those reinforcements very quickly let's just say they're blue four yeah sure they're czech republic let's make it a helicopter because nine times out of ten that's what you're going to use you can do this with vehicles and it will do the exact same thing where they drop troops off they'll either leave or they will remain at the uh, the remain, remain at the lz and basically become an entity but for this one i just want to drop off troops and that is it. So we're going to do this. Czech Republic. We're going to drop off two patrols of infantry. They're going to land at LZ Alpha. They're going to not stay at the LZ because that would add a unit. They're going to return to the spawn point that you gave them and despawn. So it's less shit the Zeus has to manage. Their insertion method is going to be landing. Note that fast rope works, but only on certain vehicles. And most of the time, the AI is just going to jump out thinking there's a rope and they will die. You can change their fly height, but I don't change their fly height because that can lead to problems. Unit behavior needs to be combat if it's going to be a hot drop. So now has the script. Executing the script gives me a little bit of lag, but then it executes the script with a helicopter coming in for a hot insert. What you want to do is you want to place this pretty far away. So it's got a realistic fly in time. The, you know, the uh, player base can't see it, um, but this thing will come in. It'll land with these guys on it. It will dismount the troops and then it will fly back off and uh, basically disappear and be out of sight, out of mind for the player base. And it is super useful, super duper useful. And you guys need to use this stuff. If you're doing missions that, you know, have QRF or have reinforcements, or you just want to have an immersive experience where troops come in during the middle of the op and maybe they're watching like some uh, base and it is super useful. Note that these helicopters will land wherever the fuck they can land that you give them, but make sure it's somewhat realistic for a landing zone. Safe zone is about 50 meters space on all sides in a radius. Uh, so let's see here. It's going to hover. They don't do it very quickly. Know that much. And you see there's a little bit of, uh, there's some obstacles in the way of his landing zone and he's going to send it. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, it kind of worked. And then you see what just happened was the AI thought that this pole was the ground and the script says, hey, when you hit something, get out. So it hit this pole and the dude just automatically jumped out. That's that's going to happen. 
but that can help us cover the next thing we're about to cover in a second. But now that all the troops are out, the helicopter's gonna immediately take off and basically fuck off and delete itself. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that for it. So now, this will cover the next thing. So these guys walked into an ambush and RIP, they all died, right? The player base doesn't see these guys anymore. They've already walked past them. They're already at my area, right? Check it out. Bodies like this, dead vehicles, all this kind of stuff, even just vehicles that are sitting there. If they're a, not a headless client, um, from what I'm uh, from what I'm aware of, if they're not a headless client or they're just like an entity that's actually there being physically, you know, there in the game, um, invisible or not, they are taking up CPU and GPU power on your server and your player base. OK, so the safe thing to do is periodically either sort down this line here and, you know, freaking select all these guys and then hold down shift and select this whole thing. Or the easiest way is just do a box around the dead units and delete them. Do this as often as possible, as much as you can, okay? Because that is going to take up a lot of power um, on your server and your player base if you've got a lot of other things going on. So delete your dead bodies. You got to do it. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap it all up with a convoy, which everyone loves Arma, and we do not use any special mods to make convoys any better. But the way that we uh, generally mitigate this across the board in our Zeus team is as follows. So let's say we want to have three MATVs roll into an ambush, right? What you normally do is you would have the whole group together and you would choose a waypoint for them, right? What's going to happen is this lead vehicle is going to take off three miles down the road and these guys are going to sit right here and not do anything because Arma is a well-functioning game with no issues. What you want to do is you want to have what I have right now. You want to have them totally degrouped, right? If they're grouped up like this, if you hold down control and you want to make them a group, all you got to do is you hold down control again, click, drag, and it makes them their own group one more time. So what you want to do is first off, you want to select the entire group and you'll give them a waypoint. What you want to do is you want to give them multiple waypoints as close together as possible so that way they keep having checkpoints so they have to keep checking if they're all together. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do ten. As you see, it's still going to happen, right? Ooh, I think my game just crashed. My game just crashed? Wow. Okay. Well... I guess you're not going to see that part. <laughs> so that is uh, that is uh, Arma 3 Convoys, okay? It's going to work. Sometimes it's not going to work, but you give them multiple waypoints, and uh, that's generally how it works, and uh, you hope for the best. But uh, that being said, damn, it's kind of weird. I'm giving the outro on my main screen, but we're, uh, we're just going to send it on this one. Anyway, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. God, Arma is a well-functioning game. I fucking love it. I'll catch you around.